There are a couple of controls in place to prevent the accidental or unintentional execution of scripts. Now, the idea behind these security controls is that they will keep someone from executing a script without knowing what they're doing, right? If somebody knows what they're doing, there are ways around it, and there are intended to be ways around this to allow you to execute scripts. So let's talk about what they are and how we can execute scripts in PowerShell despite a couple of these controls. So I'm in my scripts folder, and I'm going to do a get child item. And you're going to see here a handful of .ps1 files, and these are... Uh, a .ps1 file is a PowerShell script, and all the script is is a list of PowerShell commands in sequence. So if I do get content, and we're going to play with our demo here, which is going to be get service type .ps1. If I get content, you will see that this is just a PowerShell script. It's one command, get service, where object status equals running, sort it by startup type, Format a table, show the display name, the startup type, group by the start type, and then pipe that to more, so give it to me one page at a time. So this is one command, and a lot of our PowerShell scripts will start out with just one command. We get tired of typing these really long commands, so we save it as a one command script, and that's frequently where we'll start scripting. Now you can make scripts that are almost indistinguishable from, you know, like C programs, but we will frequently start out with just doing something simplistic like this. All right, so how do we execute the script? Well, we could try uh, the service name. So get service type dot ps1 dot ps1. And you'll see there's a limitation here. And you'll see right here the term get service type, that doesn't show up very well, is not a recognizable name of command led, a function, script file, or operator, uh, operable program. All right, what it is, in fact, let's look down here, this is going to explain it even better. The command get service type was not found, does exist in the current location. Windows PowerShell does not load commands from the current location by default. And this is one of those controls. So the idea is we're going to make it a little bit more difficult for you to exit this, execute the script. Now it's not bad. It's you have to type the path to uh, the script. In this case, in the current folder, we can just do period backslash get service type dot ps1. Now there's actually another control. Oh, by the way, the same thing is going to keep you from double clicking a PowerShell script in Explorer and having it execute. If you open up a PowerShell script in Windows Explorer, you double click on it, it won't execute the script, it will open it up in Notepad for you to edit it. And it's the same idea, we don't want somebody to be easily uh, influenced into running a script that they shouldn't be running. So if you do the location, period backslash, get service type dot PS1, we're still going to run into an issue, and that is this. Um, well, other than the fact that I can't type it correctly. All right, there we go. It cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. Now, this is a default for most, well, for uh, Windows clients. For Windows servers, you can run scripts there by default. But this is controlled by a setting called the execution policy. And we can see what the execution policy is by running the command get execution policy. And you'll see here that our policy type is restricted. That's the default on Windows clients, which means we cannot execute scripts. There are several different execution policies. We'll talk about what they are in a minute. And the point is that this is default and it blocks it. Now there's a couple of ways we can change that default. The first one is we can change it using group policy objects. And if you have group policies, so you've got an Active Directory domain, you can set a group policy that will change it for everything that's influenced by that group policy. The other thing is you can start PowerShell with a set execution policy. And the way we do that is PowerShell dash execution policy. Now, there are several different options here for the execution policy. We already know what restricted is, right? It just blocks everything. Unrestricted will run anything, but what it'll do is if it identifies something as a remote script, either being hosted on a remote machine or something that got downloaded from the internet, it will throw a warning and it'll say, hey, are you sure you want to execute this? It's from a possibly unsafe source, and you can say, yeah, go ahead and do it, and it'll do it. Or you say, you know, no, and it will block it. 
So that's unrestricted. You also have all signed and remote signed. So remote signed means anything that's remote or got downloaded from the internet. So in a remote system downloaded from the internet has to be digitally signed with a trusted certificate. Anything that's locally created doesn't. The other one is all signed, which means any script has to be signed in order to be executed. Now that's going to require either a digital code signing certificate, either one that we purchase or one that we generate from our own PKI infrastructure. Now, there's a lot of debate about what the best option is. Microsoft recommends remote signed. I'm going to go ahead and do that here real quick, which means anything remotely has to be signed or anything that comes from a remote source has to be signed, but local scripts don't. Now, I can verify that this worked by using the command get execution policy. And you'll see now that it's remote signed. So now if I try to execute get service type dot ps1, it'll actually execute my script. And there you can see it running. Okay, now that only changes it for that session. So when I exit back out to my previous PowerShell session and get execution policy, we're back to running restricted. Now, if you don't want to go through all of that every time, there is another option that is set execution policy. And this actually changes the registry. Now, notice when I did the PowerShell dash execution policy to start it up, it doesn't actually make a change permanently. It's only for that PowerShell session where things actually change. This changes the registry, which means I have to have administrative rights to do it, which I do because you'll see up here I'm running as administrator, so we're good. So I'm going to set execution policy, and I'm going to use remote signed. Now, some PowerShell blogs will argue that unsigned is just as good, if not better. You're going to see lots of debate about that. If you understand what the policies are, and you can find out about more about them, uh, actually, let me show you that here in a minute. And you set execution policy remote sign. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And now if I do get execution policy, you'll see that it's remote signed. And now it'll be that way permanently because I made the change to the registry, at least for my user. Okay. Uh, you can find out more about policies doing the get help um, about underscore execution underscore policies and I'm going to go ahead and pipe that through more and here it'll tell you all the policies so here's all signed bypasses one that we haven't talked about it just bypasses it entirely everything runs there's no warnings so you'll see all signed bypass remote signed restricted unrestricted and what uh, the scope of it is so you can read through that to get more information. Now, as far as there being one right answer, there's really not. The question is, what's going to fit best for your environment? And it may be setting something through a group policy that impacts all of your workstations or significant blocks of your workstations. You may only have a few of them that you want to execute scripts on, so there it might make sense to do it manually. You might not want to enable it by default on anything, just have your all of your administrators know that they can run PowerShell dash execution policy and set whatever execution policy they want. One other thing about security with PowerShell. PowerShell takes advantage of the built-in Windows security. So if you can't do it in the GUI, you can't do it in PowerShell. So PowerShell doesn't bypass security. A user, standard user can't open up PowerShell and take advantage of all the PowerShell tools to do things they wouldn't be able to do in the GUI. If they can't do it in the GUI, they can't do it in PowerShell and vice versa. However, it means if you want to lock tools away from people, and I've seen this in a lot of companies, what they'll do is they will set security permissions that stop people from accessing specific tools. That doesn't stop them from doing the functions, which means, let's say, for example, I restrict access to a registry editing tool. Well, in PowerShell, somebody could buy that will keep them from using regedit, right? In PowerShell, somebody can access the registry directly, and that security policy won't work, won't stop them, because it blocks access to 
regedit, it doesn't block access to PowerShell access in the registry. So when you're setting your security, you need to think that through and not block the tools, but block the actual actions. If you block the actions, it'll keep them from doing it in a GUI tool or in PowerShell, either one. Okay, so um, that gives us a real quick overview of executing PowerShell scripts and PowerShell security policies.